<coughs> Papamaru 70, um, I'm symbolic. Um, I, this is a video response to your video response to BKLR's video on the Barber's Paradox. Um, isn't that a great paradox? I love this paradox. It's a great paradox. Um, it's also known as Russell's paradox. Bertrand Russell was the one who, uh, the logician and mathematician, he was the one who came up with this paradox. Um, so, so basically, there's a bar, there's a village, and in this village or town, um, there's a barber who only shaves the people who do not shave themselves. Um, you know, I, I like your approach of, of saying, well, what if there are two barbers, or what if there is a whole village of barbers? But I think what happens is, due to the definition of the barber, um, all these other barbers would have to collapse into one. He would have to be equal to all these other barbers. Because anybody who goes to another barber to get shaved is basically not shaving himself. So he must be being shaved by the barber who shaves everybody who does not shave himself. So that second barber must be equal to the first barber. So if you had a whole village of these barbers, it would only be really a village of one guy, which is no village at all. <laughs> um, here's where I have trouble with um, this paradox. Um, basically, logically, here's this barber who shaves everybody who does not shave himself. So, if he um, if he doesn't shave himself, then he must be shaving himself. And if he's shaving himself, then he cannot be shaving himself because he only shaves the people who do not shave themselves. So if he shaves himself, he doesn't shave himself. If he doesn't shave himself, he shaves himself. Now the conclusion that BLKR reaches is that therefore this barber, such a barber, I would say, such a barber cannot exist. So what we've done is we've taken a leap from, from a logical contradiction, which involves an analysis of truth and falsity. We've now taken a leap into existence. Um, so we've gone from truth to existence. And it's a leap that I'm not really comfortable with. Um, they've, in mathematics, they've, they've used this um, in set theory the way they found the way around this is they they did a similar kind of thing on the on the obverse side they said well if we're going to talk about sets like the set of all people who shave themselves or the set of all people who don't shave themselves any kind of set um before we can do that meaningfully and avoid all these paradoxes and avoid russell's paradox we have to assume that a set exists and once we assume that a set exists then we could talk about it and, and we can do the math and these paradoxes don't arise. So once again, they've invoked existence in order to resolve a logical paradox which concerns truth. So this is mysterious, um, really mysterious. I, I, um, I mean, suddenly invoking existence to me seems like too big a leap and I'm not comfortable with it. Uh, so I was thinking what alternative solutions are there? I mean, it could be that the barber exists but he never shaves and never gets shaven. Uh, in other words, maybe there's another embedded um, assumption in the original paradox that is, that is below the surface, it's invisible, that basically says that all people must either shave or be shaved. I think that's a, um, a, uh, an invisible assumption, that all people must shave or be shaved. But if we throw that out, then what we get is two possible conclusions. Either the barber doesn't exist, or such a barber can't exist, or he can exist, but he never shaves or gets shaven. So he either doesn't exist, or he exists and he has a really long beard. Maybe that's why in some religions they imagine God having a really long beard. I don't know. Anyway, I enjoyed your video. Uh, you, your, uh, your daughter is just absolutely adorable. Um, just great. So thanks for, for uh, having her on camera. Huh? Uh, that's the story. Hey, let me know what you think. Um, I did another video response, just like you did a video response to BKLR. I did a video response um, involving set theory and talking about Russell's paradox and set theory. And the um, 
Uh, this one mathematician, Halmos, uh, used that paradox to prove that nothing includes everything. Um, it's an amazing paradox. It just, it's an amazing thing. Okay, thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.